we are moving on to a new topic. 2-1 represent rational numbers on the coordinate plane. So remember, a rational number is a number that you can write as a fraction. So keep that in mind, some vocabulary. This is page number 54 in your guided notebook. Page number 54, make sure you are on page 54. We have some objectives that we want to master before this lesson is over. We want to find the position, pairs of integers, and other rational numbers on a coordinate plane, solve real world, real world and mathematical problems by graphing points in all four quadrants on the coordinate plane. I have a lot of people that already know how to do that. I found that out on a diagnostic, so that's a good thing. We want to use signs of numbers and order pairs to indicate location and quadrants of the coordinate plane. I have a lot of people that can already do that. We want to recognize that when an ordered pair are different only by sign, the location of the points are related by reflection across one or both coordinate axes. axes. So reflection, so this is what I'm going to be uh, talking about mostly for this topic, but I want to give a little refresher for my people that may need to refresh or brush up on this topic. So we have our essential questions. How is a number line related to the coordinate plane? How are integers used within the coordinate plane? So the first thing you want to know is what is a coordinate plane? So let's look at our vocabulary words for this lesson. We have quite a few. Coordinate plane, the surface formed by two intersecting number lines. So we have two intersecting number lines, a vertical number line and a horizontal number line. Here's my horizontal number line and here's my vertical number line. So we have an intersecting number line, that's the coordinate plane, vertical and horizontal number line. We have an x-axis, the x-axis is the horizontal number line, so we can put x right here, and then we can put y for the vertical number line. All right, so that's the x and the y-axis. And then we have the origin. Where is the origin? I have some people that know where the origin is according to the uh, assessment, some people don't. So a coordinate plane, we can write this over here. A coordinate plane has a vertical number line and a horizontal number line. The origin 0, 0 is where the two number lines intersect. So go ahead and put a dot in the middle of that. This is called the origin. And the order pair for the origin is 0, 0. So let's write the order pair. Order pairs always need to have parentheses. And then you will put 0 for the x coordinate and zero for the y coordinate. This is the location of the origin. Then we have quadrants. So go ahead and highlight quadrants. That's it. the four regions that divide the coordinate plane. So this is quadrant one, this is quadrant two, this is quadrant three, and this is quadrant four. And these are called Roman numerals. So those are the four regions that separate the coordinate plane. The next word is reflection across the x axis. So here is, highlight the word, the reflection across, the reflection of a point, x, y is the ordered pair, across the x axis is located at x, negative y. When a point is reflected across the x axis, only the y coordinate changes. That is what you need to know, that's important right there. Its reflection across the x axis will have opposite y coordinates. The x coordinate remains the same. So when you reflect it across the x-axis, the x-coordinate stays the same. And then obviously reflecting across the y-axis, the y-coordinate stays the same, right? So basically when you're showing reflection, you're producing a mirror image across that axis. So if I have a coordinate plane right here and I wanna reflect across the x-axis, that means I'm gonna have one point on below the, the axis and I'll have another point above the axis because it's showing reflection across the x-axis. Now if I want to show reflection across the y-axis, I'm going to put that over here. So I have to have my uh, two number lines, my x-axis and my y-axis. And my y-axis is this vertical line. So if I want to show refre reflection across the y-axis, I will have a point one to the left and one to the right of the y axis. So whatever whatever axis you're reflecting across, that's the you need one on the, the one side and the other point on the other side and they need to be the same distance away from that axis. So we'll talk about this and get some practice in. 
And what is that called? When you have a point and then you reflect it across, that's called a transformation. Right? That's called a transformation. The, the original figure is the, is the original image. So it says, transformation of a figure is a change in its position, shape, or size. So this is going to be an important word when you use it uh, when you get to eighth grade geometry and high school geometry. You're going to talk about transformations. The new figure is the image of the original image. So that's another vocabulary word. A, a reflection is a type of transformation that flips a figure across a line called the line of reflection. A line of reflection acts as a mirror image. So this is tech really like a mirror. You can really think about a mirror here. So these are some important vocabulary words. Quickly turn to page 193 in your guided notebook. We're going to cut these out eventually, um, and then we're going to place them into our guided notebook in the correct location. Today, we're just going to write on it. So the first things first, we need to talk about what an ordered pair is. So let's look at this right here. It says an ordered pair is a pair of numbers that describe the location of a point in the coordinate plane. The X coordinate tells you tells the position along the X axis and the Y coordinate tells you the position along the Y axis. So if you think about it, we have the X coordinate and you have to remember the order. I have a few people that mixed up the X and Y coordinate. So the X coordinate comes first. As you can see here in the order pair, so order pairs always need parentheses. The X coordinate comes first and then the Y coordinate after the comma. So if you're having trouble re remembering that, you can remember X comes before Y in the alphabet. So write that down on this slide, on this uh, sheet in the same location. X comes before Y in the alphabet. Let's sing our alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X comes before Y, Z. Had to take you back to kindergarten for a second. So remember in order pair, the X coordinate you will write first and the Y coordinate you will write second. So let's look at this. It says you can graph points if you know the coordinates. So you need two coordinates to graph the point because a coordinate plane is made up of two intersecting lines. So you need two numbers to tell you the location, the coordinates to go. Your address is a coordinate. It tells the mail carrier the location of your house. So this is a coordinate on a two-dimensional plane. So this particular sheet or this part of the sheet talks about the Y coordinate. So here's our Y. The Y coordinate tells you how far to move up or down from the X axis. So when the Y coordinate is positive, so here's our Y axis right here. When the Y coordinate is positive, you start at the origin zero, zero, and you will go above because moving up, moving above is going to be a positive situation. If it's negative, you want to move down because below the X axis along the Y axis will tell you the uh, is negative situation. Above the Y axis is positive and below the Y axis you have your negative numbers. And we should all know that because that was on our quarterly exam. So the Y coordinate tells you how far to move up or down along the Y axis. Now let's go down and look at this bottom one and once again, we are on page number 193. And yes, I do want a picture of this page. So it says you can graph. You can graph if you know the coordinates. So this is the same as before. But now this is the information associated with the X coordinate. So the X coordinate tells you how far to move right or left along the X axis. So here's our X axis right here. Right. Left and right. Our X axis is left and right. So if the X coordinate is positive, which way do you think you need to move? So you will start at the origin zero, zero. Since the X coordinate is positive, going po positive is moving to the right. So if your X coordinate is positive, you will move right. 
And if your X coordinate is negative, you will move to the left. Just like positive numbers are to the right of zero and negative numbers are to the left of zero on a number line. So now we're just putting two number lines together. So let's look at uh, this right here. Let's look at this. So we have a point right here. This point is in quadrant two. Before we do that, I want to talk about quadrants real quick. And I want us to put that up here. So that's at the top. We have our quadrant. So we have quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. So we can remember this by thinking of the coordinate plane. Coordinate plane starts with the letter C. So if you begin to write a C starting in quadrant one, so this is quadrant one, this is quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. So if you write a C, you can remember the order of the quadrants. Start at the top, you will start in quadrant one, and then you will go to quadrant two on your C, and then you will go to quadrant three on your C, and then you will end up in the last quadrant four. So C for coordinate plane is how you can remember uh, the order of your quadrants. And then uh, as a little review, we have a point right here. This point is in quadrant what? What quadrant is this point A located in? This is quadrant two. Remember, uh, quadrant. if you make a C, quadrant one, quadrant two. So that is quadrant two. Uh, and this is quadrant three, as we can see over here, and then quadrant four right here. So this point is in quadrant two. If you're in quadrant two, that means your X coordinate is negative. So if you start at the origin zero, zero, remember your order pair X comes before Y in the alphabet. The X coordinate tells you how far to move what? The X coordinate tells you how far to move left or right along the X axis because the X axis is moving left or right. So in order to get to that point at the top, you have to move to the left two units. So that's where we get negative two for the X coordinate because the X coordinate tells you how far to move left or right. Since our X coordinate, which is the negative two, is a negative number, we have to start at the origin zero, zero and go to the left two units. So we'll end up at negative two. Then we have to use our other number after the comma, which is a positive one. The Y coordinate tells you how far to move up or down along the Y axis, which is right here. So we have to look at the order pair, look at the Y coordinate, which is a one. And since the Y coordinate is positive, we will go up. And that's how we end up at our coordinates or our, our order pair tells us our coordinate, which is in quadrant two at this location. All right, let's scroll back down to this right here and we want to identify which quadrants the order pair falls in we want to look at the x coordinate and look at the y coordinate so here is quadrant one in order to be in quadrant one you have to start at the origin zero zero remember your order pair x comma y and you have to have the parentheses or it is not considered an order pair so if we look at quadrant one you start at the origin zero, zero. Which way do you have to move left or right along the x-axis? Because x comes first. We have to move to the right to get into quadrant one. So our x-coordinate must be positive. And our y-coordinate, in order to get into quadrant one, we would then have to, because we're on the x-axis right now, so we actually need to go up. So we need to have a positive x, and our y-coordinate needs to be positive. So that's to get into quadrant one. In order to get into quadrant two, I would start at the origin zero, zero, and I would have to move to the left. Moving to the left along the x-axis, moving to the left of zero. Remember, our origin is zero, zero. Moving to the left of zero is going to be negative. And then I have to, in order to get into quadrant two, I would have to move up. Moving up along the y-axis is a positive because it's above moving up. And then I'm going to check with quadrant three. How do I get into quadrant three? I will start at the origin zero, zero. X coordinate comes first, so I need to move to the left of zero. Moving to the left is negative, so my X coordinate is gonna be a negative number. And then I will have to move down. Moving down along the Y axis is a negative situation. So for quadrant three, I'm looking for order pairs that have a negative X and a negative Y. Those order pairs or coordinates will end up in quadrant three. And then for the last one, to get into quadrant four, so remember this is quadrant two, quadrant three, and this is quadrant four. In order to get in quadrant four, you start at the origin zero, zero. 
you have to move left or right along the x-axis to get into quadrant four. You have to move to the right, and moving to the right of zero is positive, so the x-coordinate must be positive if the coordinate is going to end up in quadrant four. So it, it can't be zero, though. None of these can be zero. If it's a zero, if your x-coordinate or your y-coordinate is zero, that means your point is on an axis, not on, in a quadrant. So we'll talk about that in a second. So we have to move to the right. Moving to the right is positive, so the x coordinate needs to be a positive number. Then we have to move up or down along the y-axis. So in order to get into quadrant four, I have to move down into quadrant four. So moving down along the y-axis is going to be below zero, so or below, so I'm gonna put a negative. So in order to be in quadrant one, you need two positives. In order to be in quadrant two, your X coordinate must be negative and your Y coordinate is positive. In order for your order pair to end up in quadrant three, both your X and your Y coordinate needs to be negative. To end up in quadrant four, your X coordinate needs to be positive and your Y coordinate needs to be negative. All right, so let's look at, well, what if you have a zero? Points that are on the axis do not lie in a quadrant. I'm gonna say that one more time. Points on an axis are not in a quadrant. So what do I mean by that? Let me show you exactly what I mean. If you have a, if you have a point and that point is on an axis, so this is my x-axis right here, and you don't need to write this down, and this is my y-axis. So if I have a point that's here, that's here, that's anywhere on an axis, it is not in a quadrant, it's on an axis. So if the X coordinate is zero or if the Y coordinate is zero, that means it's on an axis and not in a quadrant because the X coordinate tells you how far to move left or right. So if you don't move left or right, you're going to stay on the Y axis. So let's, let's look at an example. So if we have a number, let's say we have a X right here and then we have a zero. So this is just what it'll look. So X so the X coordinate tells you how far to move left or right. So let's say our X coordinate is one and a half. You will move right here. And then the Y coordinate tells you how far to move up or down. The Y coordinate says zero. So you're not going to move up or down along the, the Y axis. You're going to stay on the X axis. So if your Y coordinate is zero, that means you're on the X axis. So go ahead and put X axis right here. All right. And then let's look at, well, how do you know if you're on the y-axis? Well, let's look at it. So I'm going to put a point on the y-axis, let's just say right here, right there. So I will start at the origin 0, 0. Do I move left or right along the x-axis? No, I'm going to stay right where I am because I just need to move down. So since I'm not moving left or right along the x-axis, my x-coordinate is 0. And then I will have to move down to negative 1. So you will have, you can have a, a move up or down. You will have a number for the Y coordinate if the point is on the Y axis, but the X coordinate needs to have a zero. But let's talk about reflection really quick. So flip the page to 194, and we're gonna talk about reflection. So reflection across the X axis. The reflection of a point XY across the X axis is located at X negative Y. When the, when the point is reflected across the x-axis, the x-coordinate stays the same and the y-coordinate changes to the opposite. A point and its reflection across the x-axis will have an opposite y-coordinate. So if you're reflecting across the x-axis, the x-coordinate stays the same. So remember that. And the other coordinate will become the opposite. So let's highlight that right here. I'm going to show you an example. The x-coordinate stays the same. The X coordinate stays the same. So let's look at this right here. I have a point right here, and this red point, and the order pair is two for the X coordinate and one for the Y coordinate. So I want to reflect this point across the X axis. So the X coordinate should stay the same. So if I stay the same, my same X coordinate, I will keep a two. My Y coordinate is gonna become the opposite and the opposite of positive one is negative one. So this is my reflection at this point right here. 
to negative one. Notice that there is a mirror image. So if I draw my line of reflection right here, which is the X axis, here's my X axis. I'm showing a mirror image across the X axis. Here is my, my first point and here is my second point. So if we want to show reflection across the X axis, the X coordinate stays the same and the Y coordinate becomes the opposite. So this is a reflection across the X axis. And all of the points are reflected. So if we look at uh, the green point. Notice that the X coordinate stayed the same. The Y coordinate became the opposite. And here's our other, our purple point. The X coordinate stayed the same. The Y coordinates are opposites because it's a mirror image across the X axis. So the X coordinate has to stay the same because the X coordinate tells you how far to move left or right. So if you're reflecting across the X axis, you're gonna to move to the right the same units or to the left the same units. The only thing that needs to change is the, the Y coordinate because you need to flip it across the X axis. So X coordinate stays the same when you are showing reflection across the X axis. X axis, X coordinate stays the same. X axis, X coordinate stays the same. Now let's look at reflection across the Y axis. Reflection across the Y axis, when a point is reflected across the Y axis, the Y coordinate stays the same. Y coordinate stays the same. And the X coordinate becomes the opposite. All right? So let's look at this right here. So our line of reflection is gonna be across the Y axis, which is right here. So in order to reflect across the Y axis, we have our triangle. Let's say this is our, uh, our A point. Notice that the Y coordinate stays the same because we're going across the Y axis, literally going across the Y axis. The Y coordinate will stay the same. The X coordinate becomes the opposite. What's the opposite of two? Negative two. So if you're starting in quadrant one, when the ordered pair needs to be positive, positive, and you reflect across the Y axis, in order to be in quadrant two, your X coordinate needs to be negative and your y coordinate needs to be positive so you can just know that and then change the number to the appropriate sign as well that's another way you can do it so when you're reflecting across the y axis what stays the same the y coordinate stays the same and what happens to the x coordinate it becomes the opposite so the opposite of two is negative two we're reflecting across the y-axis. So we have a point here. We're reflecting, which means we're going across, just like when I was looking in the mirror, we're going across the line of symmetry. We're going across right here. So both of these numbers are the same distance away from the y-axis. Here we have, we're gonna do two over here and then we're gonna do two on the other side. Make sure you're paying attention because I wanna make sure you, can ha you have this tomorrow. So reflection across the x-axis, the X coordinate stays the same. So if we have a coordinate plane right here, I'm just gonna sketch it out. This is our X axis, and this is our Y axis. So this point right here has positive, positive coordinates, so it's gonna start in quadrant one. You don't really need to put the location. And I wanna go across the X axis. So I need to take that point and literally go across the X axis, which is right here. So I'm gonna end up in quadrant four. In order to be in quadrant four, my X coordinate needs to be a positive number because if I started at the origin zero, zero, I have to move to the right. So my X coordinate needs to be positive and my Y coordinate, I need to move down to get into quadrant four. So my Y coordinate moving down is negative. So that means I need to take these same numbers. My X coordinate needs to be a positive three and my Y coordinate needs to be negative because I'm going across the X axis. So it'll be, instead of two, it'll be negative two. Notice that my X coordinate stayed the same as a three and my Y coordinate became the opposite. That's how you end up in quadrant four, which I just showed in the sketch. Now let's look at the next one. So we're starting with negative four, six. What quadrant is this negative this ordered pair? Negative four, six. So you will start at the origin zero, zero. You have to go to the left 
since our x coordinate is negative, we have to go to the left four units. So I'm just going to go to the left. And then I have to go up because my y coordinate is positive. The y coordinate tells you how far to move up or down. So since my y coordinate is 6, this is x, this is y. Since my y coordinate is 6, I have to move up 6 units. So I'm going to be in quadrant 2. So the, in quadrant 2 is negative, positive. I'm in quadrant 2. And I want to go across the x-axis. So I'm starting right here. And then I need to take my point across the x-axis because I want to reflect across the x-axis. So if I wanted to take this point right here and go across the x-axis, I need my pencil to go across it. And I'm going to end up in quadrant 3. In order to be in quadrant 3, what type of ordered pair do I need? So if I start at the origin 0, 0, I have to move left. So I need a negative and a negative because moving to the left of 0 is negative and moving below 0 is negative. So I need both of my ordered pairs in this case to be negative. So that means I need to keep my negative 4. X coordinate stays the same and the Y coordinate becomes the opposite. So it's going to be negative 6. So you can, you can sketch it out and get your answer or you can remember uh, that the X coordinate is going to stay the same and the Y coordinate becomes the opposite. Some people cannot remember the X coordinate stays the same and the Y coordinate becomes the opposite. So I want you to always know how to get your answer by a quick sketch. Go to the quadrant, go across the axis, and then you know what quadrant your order pair should be in, your, reflect, your reflected order pair. And then you can keep take change your number to the signs of the reflected order pair. So over here, we're not gonna sketch it out. We're just gonna read it. Reflection across the Y axis, the Y coordinate stays the same. So if the Y coordinate is gonna stay the same, this is my X coordinate, this is my Y coordinate, I'm going to Keep my y coordinate the same, which is negative 2 in this case, and my x coordinate is going to become the opposite. The opposite of 5 is negative 5. So this is easy if you can remember that, but like I said, I don't want you to memorize. All right, the next one. We have the order pair negative 4, negative 8. What quadrant is that in? So we're starting in quadrant 3. And then we're going across the y-axis. So if we go across the y-axis, we're going to end up in quadrant across the y-axis. We're going to end up in quadrant four. So the, the y-coordinate, which is the second coordinate, x, y. Remember, x comes before y in the alphabet. The y-coordinate is going to stay at negative eight. The x-coordinate becomes the opposite. So the coordinate that you want to stay the same, write that first. And then take the opposite of the other coordinate, so the opposite of negative four is 4. Notice to be in quadrant 4, a positive x and a negative y, which is what we have here. So you can go ahead and do the other ones. We'll review it tomorrow. Make sure you're ready.